Hello everyone. So, in this lecture I would be discussing about basic organization and functions of the blood. So, as we know blood is liquid connective tissue, it is a kind of liquid, liquid connective tissue handled by cardiovascular system and we have totally 4 to 6 liters of the blood in our body. So, when you take a, take an average person having uh, approximately 4 to 6 liters of the total blood. So, that total volume of the blood is constituting around 6 to 8 percentage of total body weight. This is about the very basic uh, uh, understanding of the blood. So, blood is liquid connective tissue. So, let us see the details of the blood picture, how it looks like. As we know blood color is red, but when you sus subjected to you know standing position, if you take the blood into a container, it can be test tube or any vessel, keep it for some time with anticoagulant, then this blood gets separated into the three parts. The uppermost layer, uppermost part is plasma and the lowermost two layers are blood cells. Out of that the middle layer is WBCs, white blood cells and the lowermost extreme red color RBCs. These are the blood cells. So, the blood cells are formed elements means the cells has got definite shape formed elements, whereas the plasma of the blood is does uh, does not have any uh, the shape, the plasma means does not have any shape. So, when you pour the plasma into a container, it takes the shape of that particular container. If you pour the plasma into the glass, it takes the shape of the glass. So, that is the reason why the name has given to the this liquid part of the blood. So, in nutshell in our blood we have liquid part and cellular part. The cellular part is RBCs and WBCs, red blood cells, white blood cells and the liquid part is the plasma and again the plasma is divided into the uh, varieties. Coming to the RBCs, the RBCs the name itself indicates the red blood cells. So, these cells are biconcave discs, the disc the round shape disc having the compressed areas in the center. So, these are the biconcave discs. So, these discs are filled with the hemoglobin that is the reason why these cells are given the name of erythrocytes. Erythro means red, sites means cells, red cells, RBCs, red blood cells. So, so this WBCs and red blood cells together constitutes around 45 percent is of total blood volume. Remaining 55 percent is of blood volume is comprising with plasma. And coming to the WBCs, these are the very minimal cells are having the very low quantity in the blood known as WBCs, white blood cells that means does not have any particular color, but however these cells can be seen in different colors when you stain with a different stains under microscope. We have neutrophils, lymphocytes, monocytes, basophils, eosinophils and platelets. So, these are the cells known as WBCs, white blood cells, does not have any color in actual situation, in real situation. So, when we look at the plasma, as I mentioned the plasma is the part having 55 percent of total volume of blood and in plasma we have different uh, 
substances those are known as plasma proteins plasma solutes and majority by water so water is is a major part in the plasma 92% of water is there in the plasma right so this is 92% and the solutes 1% of other solutes and plasma proteins so plasma proteins are 7% so let us see what are the plasma proteins present in the plasma we have albumin we have globulin we have fibrinogen so albumin is a protein which carries majority of uh, hormones and other substances globulin we have alpha globulin beta and gamma alpha beta globulins are the transporting proteins and gamma proteins gamma globulins are antibodies there are different kinds of antibodies we have so that comes under gamma globulins we have fibrinogen this fibrinogen is one of the very very important uh, protein which participates in the blood clotting process we have other regulatory proteins like enzymes and hormones etc in the under plasma proteins of plasma which comprising around 7% of total plasma so we have 1% of other solutes these solutes includes electrolytes those electrolytes are sodium potassium calcium chloride and we have organic nutrients like glucose amino acids and uh, we have uh, fats triglycerides these comes under organic nutrients and we have organic wastes also so these organic wastes are the cellular end product or metabolic end products which dissolves in the plasma so these organic waste products are like urea uric acid lactic acid etc and we have even carbon dioxide dissolved in the plasma certain amount of the physical form of carbon dioxide dissolved in the plasma which transports back from the cells to the lungs in fact majority of the carbon dioxide being carried by our rbcs red blood cells so this is about the basic understanding of uh, the blood and its components and coming to the the major functions if you look at the blood blood has got four major functions so the first and foremost function is the transport what does it transports from where to where actually the blood transports or carries the oxygen from the lungs to the tissue carbon dioxide from tissues to the lung nutrients nutrients like the glucose triglycerides cholesterol and other fat related nutrients and amino acids from the git gastrointestinal tract to the elsewhere of the body and the blood carries the our blood transports the metabol metabolites there are many metabolites in our body which has to be move on from one place to another place for the metabolism and catabolic process we have hormones we have many hormones in our body for example thyroid hormone which is secreting from the thyroid gland which has to be carried from the thyroid gland to the elsewhere or everywhere every corner of the body so the transportation process of the hormones also you know handled by our blood and maintenance of the temperature so maintenance of the temperature is also one of the main function of our blood so vitamins we have many vitamins which are essentially absorbed from the gastrointestinal tract 
has to be carried from GIT to other parts of the body for metabolic process. We have enzymes, we have many enzymes in our body needs to move on from one place to the another place for the general metabolic process. We have pH regulation also, the pH regulation also maintained by our blood. So the pH regulation essentially has to be maintained from 7.3 to 7.4 is the range of pH of our blood. So the pH physiological range is very very important in order to keep all cells in functional status. If any deviation of the pH leads to you know abrupt changes or shutdown of the cells metabolic process. So coming to the next function is prevention of the hemorrhage. What do you mean by prevention of the hemorrhage? If I have any small cut in my skin or any blood vessel that triggers you know bleeding. So the bleeding has to be immediately stopped in order to prevention of loss of blood. So that process is known as hemostasis. Hemo means blood, State, stasis means constant position, stay back. So hemostasis means the arrest of bleeding from the blood vessels. So that is known as, uh, that is ac actually or essentially carried by our blood because we have fibrinogen, we have uh, different clotting factors in our plasma which you know triggers their action along with the platelets and try to seal off or seal off the you know injured blood vessel. And we have the third function of the blood is a defense function, defense against the foreign agents. Any pathogens whether it is bacteria or virus which are trying to enter in a body has to be you know eliminated immediately. So that process is mainly carried out or by, by our WBCs, mainly these WBCs. We have varieties of WBCs, granulocytes and agranulocytes. So we have neutrophils, eosinophils, basophils are the granulocytes which, the, which have got some granules inside the cytosol and we have monocyte, lymphocytes, agranulocytes. So these granulocytes and agranulocytes are primary defensive army in our body like border security force. So is there any foreign organism trying to enter in our body? So these primary defense mechanism of WBCs comes into the play and they try to eliminate those foreign body from our body. So this is how the defense function acting against the foreign agents like a border security force to any country. And we have uh, one more function lastly the hemostasis. Hemostasis is, uh, uh, hemostasis means a constant maintenance of internal environment, internal environment. So that is known as hemostasis. So these are the basic functions of the blood. So in this lecture we saw simply the, the organization of the blood, the component of the blood the parts of the blood, plasma, WBCs, RBCs, the liquid part and the cellular part and again we saw the sub parts of these uh, plasma and WBC, RBCs and also saw the major basic functions of the blood. This is all about the basic organization and functions of the blood.